All right, so case one, an illegal practice of veterinary medicine. Uh, the communication problem that I found was whether or not Dr. Stevenson or Dr. Peterson should take legal action against the incident that occurred between Jennifer and Dr. Williams after hours this past weekend. The criteria that I selected for this decision was ethics, risk, and intent. For ethics, uh, having a strong set of ethics is very important in the medical field. The well-being of living things is not something to be taken lightly. In this case, the decision that Dr. Stevenson and Dr. Peterson will make will serve as a direct indication of their company's ethics. If they decide to sweep it under the rug, it will prove that they are not a trustworthy and honest business. Furthermore, Dr. Williams violated the business ethics by going behind the backs of the head veterinarians and giving an unlicensed person a controlled substance. This can be measured by reevaluating the ethics, reevaluating the ethics of the company and determining the severity of the deviation. Uh, risk. The incident that occurred between Jennifer and Dr. Williams had the potential to be much, much worse. The company would have been held liable for anything else that happened with the controlled substance, so Jennifer and Dr. Williams are very lucky that it played out the way that it did. Dr. Stevenson and Dr. Peterson will definitely be asking themselves if one slip-up uh, is serious enough to report and jeopardize uh, the company's license and reputation. Intent. From the stories that both Jennifer and Dr. Williams gave, it's clear that there was no malicious intent behind their actions. Jennifer obviously only wanted to put her dying uncle's dog out of its misery. Uh, this is an interesting interpretation of the dilemma, uh, and it will most likely be considered by Dr. Stevenson and Dr. Peterson in their decision-making process. It should also be noted that neither Jennifer or Dr. Williams had any prior unethical or illegal offenses. So, for my decision alternatives, for the first decision alternative, uh, I said the situation should be kept quiet and Jennifer and Dr. Williams should be placed on probation and have restricted access to certain aspects of the company. Uh, and my reason, my rationale is Dr. Stevenson and Dr. Peterson should explain the severity of the situation to both employees. Uh, this will make them realize what they did was wrong and should never be done again. Taking this route would avoid all the potential conflict because it stays within the business, but it's not the ethical path to take. The second one, I said both Jennifer and Dr. Williams should be let go for their actions taking place this past weekend. This decision is, this decision is dangerous because it can come back to haunt uh, Dr. Stevenson and Dr. Peterson. By only firing the two employees, they're letting them get, get away with something which was illegal. This portrays that neither them or the company can be trusted. And finally, number three, the dilemma should be reported to the police and proper legal action should be taken for the individuals involved and the company itself. So this decision involves law enforcement uh, and can lead to potentially serious outcomes, but it is the most ethical route to take. Uh, by getting the officials involved, it shows that they care about what they're uh, about doing the right thing and they're a trustworthy veterinarian. Although the reputation of the former employees will be tarnished, they'll be honored for doing the right thing at the end of the day. Uh, my criteria analysis, uh, I did not choose decision number one, which was the situation should be kept quiet. Um, my implementation for ethics, risk, and intent are as follows. For ethics, for nothing to be done about this proves that Dr. Stevenson and Dr. Peterson do not have any regard for following or enforcing proper ethics within their company. Risk, the situation that occurred is illegal and the employees involved as well as the company itself would be in jeopardy if anything was to be uncovered later and it would completely diminish the prestige of the company and its employees. For intent, uh, one could argue that it was just an honest mistake. Uh, and that the two of them did not understand the repercussions or the severity of the incident. But I find that hard to believe that an assistant uh, veterinarian didn't really know this. The second decision alternative that I did not choose was that both Jennifer and Dr. Williams should be let go for their actions. <clears throat> it's based on ethics, risk, and intent, which I'll get into right now. For ethics, simply just firing the people who were involved in a, fel in a felony and not reporting it to the police displays poor company ethics, obviously. 
for risk, Dr. Stevenson and Dr. Peterson will have to find a new assistant veterinarian and receptionist to take uh, to replace Dr. Williams and Jennifer, who are both very good at their jobs, according to the case. Upon their release, Dr. Stevenson and Peterson will need to make up a lie to tell their customers uh, when they ask what happened to them, because obviously some people like Dr. Williams and they take their dog or whatever to see them. Um, and that just makes organizational communication very difficult because, again, organizational communication is getting everybody on the same page in a company. And when you're dealing with a lie, uh, it only gets deeper and deeper and more complicated as it goes on. So finally, the decision alternative that I did choose was that the dilemma should be reported to the police and proper legal action should be taken for the individuals involved and the company itself. The ethics behind this is that it shows proper business ethics and uh, will prove to the public that they are firm believers in doing the right thing. Uh, for risk, because they turn to the police, the fate of the employees is now in the courts, not the company. Um, if they did not turn to the officials, the company itself would be in danger because they're keeping people who committed a felony just kind of under the rug and in the company and letting them just kind of do their own thing. Uh, and finally, intent. Uh, although the intent wasn't to do anything harmful, what they did was against the law at the end of the day. Um, like I said before, what happens to them is in the hands of the courts at that point, not the company, which is important. Um, and finally, I wanted to touch upon a theoretical perspective uh, that I used throughout this case and to help me determine what my preferred alternative would be. Uh, my analysis for this case was guided by Redding's typology of unethical communication. We learned about that in the slides as well as in the textbook this week. Uh, what Dr. Williams did was coercive because she abused her power by allowing an unlicensed person to handle and administer a controlled substance. I used Redding's research to strengthen my claim that the dilemma should be reported to the police and the proper legal action should be taken for the individuals involved and the company itself. Thank you, everybody. And uh, yeah, I'll open the comments.